Hello and welcome to Midlife Meltdown. I'm Ian and today's short video is going to explore the topic of whether going no contact with a narcissist is necessary. So before we explore that, if you're finding these videos helpful, then please help me reach more people by subscribing to the channel, sharing the video, hitting the like button or leaving some comments in the section below. I will respond to any comments you leave. If you have any suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future or topics you'd like me to cover, then please leave a suggestion in there. So the default advice when dealing with narcissistic relationships seems to be, if possible, to go no contact. So to effectively break all contact with your partner, so to ignore their calls, ignore their messages and effectively remove them from your life altogether. But in some cases that's not practical. So many relationships and people that I've spoken to have joint custody of children, have other connections, joint friends, joint colleagues that meet. So I thought, given my own experience of this recently, I'd explain my thoughts on whether no contact is essential. Now to caveat that slightly, I don't think I qualify as an ultimate authority of whether no contact is essential. I've been out of my relationship for about nine months and formally divorced for about four, but I do remain in contact with my ex. The main reason for that being we have animals that we would consider effectively our children together. Now they remain with me, I, I effectively have custody of them, but I still update my ex on their status and we pass messages occasionally. And while doing this, it got me thinking about whether no contact is really necessary. I think the conclusion I came to is it's not essential in all cases, but I do believe it's an option that you need to be able to exercise at any given point in time. So let me explain that a little deeper. Now, occasionally when I speak or message to my ex, which isn't very often, I still detect signs of narcissistic personality disorder. I also get triangulation from family members on her side. And there's a very strong sense of disingenuous, I guess, manipulative questions that come in. Now, what's really surprised me as a change in behavior in myself is my ability to deal with it. You know, in, now in the relationship itself, I was, I guess, very submissive to this. I would adapt to it. I would try to work around it. You know, as I, as I came through the full realization of what narcissistic personality disorder is, I feel like I have 100% restored my boundaries. And I think that's the key to whether no contact's necessary. So I think if you get to a point where you have boundaries that you can apply to your ex, to your spouse, to the narcissist, then effectively you can treat them as a new person in your life. So as an example, on a phone call fairly recently, the, the conversation was going quite well, you know, updating on how the animals are doing, etc exchanging pleasantries, the conversation suddenly turned to accusations of, of infidelity on my side and the, reason for the, and the reason for the divorce happening. Now, instead of, as I would have in the past, rationalizing or trying to justify or arguing about things, I just simply said, I'm not talking to you anymore and hung up the phone and I didn't pick it up again. Now, what felt really strange to me is I didn't feel any sense of guilt or judgment doing that you know it felt like a very healthy natural thing to do where effectively I said look I'm willing to still have some kind of relationship with you but the relationship has terms and conditions and if those terms and conditions aren't met then I'm not willing to have that relationship so effectively mentally and what I was saying was I'm willing to go no contact so it's an option I keep in my pocket at any time and that that option isn't there for me to punish someone. So the other thing I see a lot online that I worry about is that, that the thought of no contact is to punish someone, is to be very harsh and to, to make the, the narcissist squirm and miss you. And that's, that's really not the point. The point of no contact is a tool to allow you to have the space to heal and, and to get over the, the damage that's been done to you. If you're thinking about what no contact is doing to the narcissist, you're really missing the point. And, and I'd, I'd argue effectively that, that you're not really in the final stages of truly accepting and, and getting over the relationship. So no contact is there to give you the time and space to do that, effectively to desensitize you to the narcissistic abuse. And if you can truly get to that point, as I, as I believe I have, then I think no contact isn't necessary, but it needs to be necessary if it needs to be. So the key thing that I'm really keen to communicate to people 
when I look back at what was wrong with me, why did this happen to me? And, and I truly believe that I played a key part in a toxic relationship is that I was unable from the very start to set effective boundaries. And that's probably a problem I've had in my life. You know, it's the avoidant personality disorder kind of traits that I would rather have my boundaries trampled on than risk offending someone. That has completely changed with me where actually I have, I have set very almost aggressive, clear boundaries for any relationship in my life. And if I feel like those boundaries aren't being respected, then I'm 100% willing to do whatever I need to do to, to stop that relationship. Whether it's being rude to someone, whether it's just being very clear with someone, whether it's just hanging up the phone to someone. But one thing I'd say that was critical for me to be able to set those boundaries was for me to exit that relationship completely. So it really made a huge difference to me when the divorce was finalized, when there was a legal separation, when the assets were split, when she was physically living somewhere differently. You know, at that point, I felt like I had all the means to protect my boundaries that I needed. Whereas before, until that divorce was finalized, until the house was in my name, there were legal limits and legal ramifications that prevented me from, from saying, I don't want you in my house. So for example, now if my if my ex-wife wants to come and visit the animals, I have the legal right to ask her to leave my house, which was hugely important for me. That was a significant enabler of narcissistic abuse, is my inability to remove her from the house and effectively having to remove myself from the house at my own cost, at my own pain, at my own stress. But having those things in place, having the divorce finalised, having the house finalised, you know, having physically moved away, enabled me to really establish and now maintain those boundaries. And that's something I'm gonna to need to do for the rest of my life. So that was just a short video I wanted to make on my thoughts on going no contact. I think in most cases, it's probably necessary, at least for a period of time. But I think it's key to remember that the point of no contact is to help you not to think about the narcissist.